That wasn't important, was it? Hey, I hope you're all having a good day today. In this video, I'm gonna show the three things that I did to improve the sound uh, in my 2020 uh, Toyota RAV4. And hopefully some of these could apply to uh, different vehicles uh, that you might actually have if you're thinking about doing an upgrade. I'm gonna divvy up this video into three different things that you can do. Uh, one of them uh, being the easiest and the most value for your money, which is changing the front dashboard uh, speakers. The second thing that I highly recommend doing for just overall sound uh, quality and also just the enjoyment of feeling your music is adding a subwoofer. And the third thing that I'm gonna show you that uh, I did that actually didn't make a huge impact uh, in my opinion is adding new door speakers. And that was a surprise actually because they're such big speakers. All right, so the first thing that I recommend doing for all vehicles, if you can, is replacing your dash speakers. And it makes sense that these would actually be such important speakers uh, because they're the speakers that are actually closest to your ears when you're driving. And they're also the easiest to replace out of all the different things that uh, I did to improve the sound in here. Another benefit is that the cost of these speakers is not that much. So here are the different speakers that I tested. I tested the JBL Club speakers. Uh, these three and a half inch uh, uh, speakers are $48 at the time that I got them. And I also tried the JBL GX302s. Between the two, I like the sound of the GX302s and those are the ones that I ended up installing and keeping. And like most of my projects at home, my supervisor is my cat, Tabby. So she'll be joining in on this video just to make sure that uh, everything gets done right the first time. When it comes to taking apart the different covers and uh, door panels, uh, the biggest thing is just having something that's gonna pop things off because nothing is really bolted or screwed in. Almost everything is clip-on. I did try using a chopstick uh, to uh, take some of the clips off, but the chopstick proved to be too thick in almost every place that I tried using it. So at the end, I just settled for a very thin screwdriver and just kind of just be slow and take your time. Be careful not to leave any dents, but otherwise the screwdriver I think is just fine for the job. So there is a set of harnesses that you're gonna want to buy if you're replacing your own dashboard speakers because the factory comes with this um, adapter looking piece and the club speakers or the JBL GX speakers both just use like a left and a right side and this Red Wolf uh, harness makes it really easy just to set the two uh, pins inside. Uh, so you do have to take uh, the covers off the dashboard, take out the screws that secure the things they call speakers, and then you unplug the speaker from the Toyota's factory wiring harness, and we will then put in the Red Wolf cables. And from there, you just put the two sides of the Red Wolf harness into the new JBLs. And maybe before screwing in the JBLs, just turn on the sound system, listen to them, see how you like them. Compare different speakers. You definitely don't have to choose any of the ones that I picked, which are those two JBLs. If uh, Rockford works for you or Boss Audio, there's so much great brands that I was researching. Find the one that works, but listen to the sound before you uh, settle on one. And then once you're happy, screw them in, Pop the covers back on and go on a really fun road trip and uh, take your time listening to the music. All right, the second best investment, actually this is probably the best investment if you really want to feel the music, is getting a sub. Uh, I actually had mine installed professionally, but I did buy the Rockford Fosgate all-in-one. Got the 12 inch 300 watt system. So the speaker, well, I guess you'd say the subwoofer and the amp all together were $350. Installation cost me about $200, but that was a professional install with uh, all the different accessories that they needed to use. So I thought it was worth it. And the sound is incredible. So I'll show you guys how I have mine set up. So I do have this cover on there that way when I'm parked, so people can't see it. We have uh, this sub laying kind of like on its back, which works fine. And then there's Velcro on the bottom to kind of keep it from sliding around the back. So there's Velcro to the rear seats right there. Only drawback is 
I can't pull the seat forward unless I pull the Velcro off first, but I don't really need to go back here anyway. And I still have this other seat that I can fold back. But yeah, that's nice. And then because it's so sturdy, I mean, you could put bags on top if you wanted to, and it'll be just fine because it's a very, very solid speaker. Yeah. Put that right there and we'll close that back up. So yep, very incognito. You can actually see on some of my dash cam videos, my dash cam actually shaking from the base. And I just have it on maybe like a 30% of its power. Actually, I can show you there's actually a volume control knob that they give you. So right there, there's that volume control knob. So as you can see, I only have mine on about 30% and it definitely hits at that level. But if you want to actually have your entire like uh, back window rattling, you can probably turn that up a lot higher. I just want to hear still the vocals, but have a little bit of bass that I can feel on my back when I'm driving. All right, so when I replaced the door speakers, I chose to start with the rear door. So I did the left and the right. And even though, again, from the pictures, it looks like the Pioneers that come factory look so flimsy and small compared to the JBL that I tried. I actually tried both the JBL Club 300 watts as well as the GX628 180 watts. I actually like the Club more than the uh, GX sounds. Although, because I ended up having one sent to me damaged, I actually just installed the GX one since I didn't want to wait for the replacement. Sound-wise, the highs are very, very clear. Some great trouble, although the bass leaves a little bit more to be desired for. I do admit though that they're not hooked to an amp though, so it's just the factory head unit going to that door speaker. Uh, but at least the subwoofer that I have that does have the built-in amp compensates for the lack of uh, bass from the door speakers. I kept the front door speakers factory because again, I didn't notice a huge difference from when I replaced the rear Pioneers with the JBL. So why spend the time and the money to replace the door ones as well? So to start on the door assemblies, I start by unclipping both the part that uh, holds like the window lock there. And we take out the handle parts. Again, they're all just clip on, pop them off. And then you will have access to eventually these screws. Hey, doesn't this kind of remind you of a hockey stick? Biggest note though is make sure you do remove the correct screws, not the right ones. Put those back in. Okay, so once you pop the right screws off, uh, then you can start to pull the bottom of the door um, assembly off from the sides, like near the front, all the way through the bottom, and it should pop off. And then you should have access to the speaker. So one thing that will give you confidence is knowing that if a machine could put this stuff together, you can take it apart. That wasn't important, was it? That's the part that's gonna give people some anxiety and that's taking a racer blade to your car. Uh, but just keep in mind that you're doing this to replace it with something much better. So it's gonna be okay. Wait, how much did I spend on this car again? And very similar to the front dash speakers, just pop off the adapter that comes standard and you insert your wiring harness. In this one, I use Red Wolf again. Once the harness is on, you can go ahead and plug those into your speaker. Again, there's one side that's larger and one side that's smaller, so they will only fit where they're supposed to go. Once it's all plugged in, turn the car on, play some music that you like, really test them out. Again, try different brands out if free returns are an option for you know the speakers that you bought. 
And then once it's all done, that's where you can start to clip things back together. I did have to do a little bit of drilling to get this speaker to fit nice and snug into the vehicle. Just make sure that you don't choose uh, any screws that are too long because uh, you don't want them going into anything else inside the door or I mean, worst case, you don't want the screws going through the door to the outside. Uh, the fun part of, of this actually is putting the door back together because everything just kind of snaps back in. It's like a really nice, big, expensive Lego set <laughs> putting this back together. Right, guys well hopefully you guys get to enjoy some more sound uh, if you do choose to do your own uh, speakers or even if you just choose to pay someone to do it yourself i think it's worth the investment uh, either way but hopefully this gives you some ideas for some of the uh, brands and some of the complicated or easier um, repairs that you can do